So in 1997, where were you then in terms of sort of right. career and, and, and so on? Because this, this is the year of the game that you've chosen, of course. Yeah, and, and, and in a way, you know, this is even, this goes well beyond journalism in that this is discovery <clears> in, in, the, in, in the purest sense, if you like. So 96, 97 is the season, uh, <laughs> that says it all, doesn't it? The season in which I go to Oviedo University. So it's, you know, this, uh, the year <laughs> in which I go. <laughs> <laughs> The, the, yeah. It's the academic year that the season yeah. in which I go to Oviedo, and actually, you know, as you can imagine, this is a discovery well beyond uh, Real Oviedo. It's a discovery mm -hmm. of, of all sorts of things, and this is one of the reasons as well why, on a purely subjective level, although I would probably argue that there's an objective case to be made here as well, there has never in my life been a player make a single season impact on me like Brazilian Ronaldo at Barcelona. But it may well be because it's the first season I live in Spain. And I'll be honest with you, I'd never heard of him. Well, I, I, I don't know. I might have heard him get mentioned in, in, in Holland, but he turns up at, at, at Barcelona and I go to Spain. And so, of course, what happens when you go to Spain is even if you do go, and we did this as a group of, a very small group of English guys living in Oviedo, you go every Saturday and watch the English game, whatever it was, shown on Spanish TV, only one a week. But you then sort of, you go, right, okay, I'm in Spain now. Let's do Spanish football. And then you have this thing, because Ronaldo was a thing, just just unbelievably good, just destroying teams on his own. As I say, genuinely, all these amazing Messi seasons that I've watched, I could argue, I could agree that objectively some of his seasons were better than Ronaldo. But that sense of discovering something I'd never seen or never heard of, which is why I think Ronaldo for me has this kind of wow factor that probably only Maradona has. Because of course in 86, when I'm nine years old, when that World Cup starts, I'm 10, I think on the day of the quarterfinal of Brazil against France. Um, Again, Maradona was a discovery. And I'm not saying no one had heard of him, but back then you didn't watch international football like you do now. So you did discover people. And so that was a, a, an entire year of discovery for me. It's a new place. It's a new football. And of course, in my case, because I lived in Oviedo, it crystallizes about, around Real Oviedo. And this game in January 1997 is a discovery because it's the biggest of the games, because it's Real Oviedo away against the local rivals, Sporting Gijón, and everything that kind of that goes with that as, as an experience. Mm -hmm. I mean, can you explain a bit about Oviedo as a town? I mean, mm -hmm. where yeah. is it? What's it like? So, so Oviedo is the is the capital of of Asturias, which is uh, the the principality within Spain. So, a bit like Prince Charles is the Prince of Wales. The, the you know the heir to the throne is the Prince of Asturias. That doesn't really mean very much, to be perfectly honest. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a it's an area that's wet. It's an area that's that's mountainous that has a long history of um, coal mining, a long if you like, left-wing history as well, um, politically speaking. There was an Asturias Revolution in 1934, two years before the Spanish Civil War. Uh, it has a kind of a very proud identity in, in that sense, although it doesn't have an independent identity like, for example, <coughs> Galicia, or Asturia, uh, sorry, Galicia or, or Catalonia or the Basque Country has. In fact, there's a phrase that, that Spaniards like to use because the, the Reconquista against the, against the Moors supposedly begins at the Battle of Covadonga which is in, in Asturias in 11, which year is it, 11? Oh, crikey, I should know this, 49, I think, but I'm not completely sure about that. I don't think and anyone's going to pull, it up, pull you up on that, is it? Don't worry. Some, <laughs> someone will. Someone always, someone always does. It'll probably show my bias somehow. Um, so so um, there's this phrase that gets used in Asturias, which is um, Asturias is Spain. The rest of it is just conquered territory. Because that's where, you know, it's the only part that wasn't conquered by the Moors and where the reconquest supposedly starts. Um, and, and yet it's curious because as I've just said, Asturias in theory is a place with a, with a left-wing identity. But Oviedo being the capital city of it is very much, if you like, a kind of a bourgeois enclave in that. And to be honest, Oviedo is very prim as a city, very clean, very smart, um, very elegant, but a, a brilliant place to, to go to university and um, study. Mm. Mm. Um, Jonathan, what were your thoughts on, on La Liga in, around that time in 1997? Because for me, that was when you know Sky Sports started showing it and y y it was a bit of interest over here. Yeah, I mean, being honest, I didn't, didn't know anything about it. I, I, you know, we saw clips of Ronaldo doing brilliant things every now and again. Sure. And beyond that, really <clears> not very much. I mean, I, I, was, I was at university then um, and I'm not even sure we had Sky at university. Mm -hmm. uh, I, yeah, I don't think we did have it. So, so my football was match of the day and whatever live game you could find, or you go to the pub to watch it. Mm. So at the time, um, yeah, my knowledge of La Liga would have been 
next to nil. Obviously, subsequently, I've gone back and you know, doing the book on Barcelona, you look at Robson season and everything. But no, at, at, at the time, my knowledge would have been almost almost nothing. Yeah, I mean, it's, but I mean, what I was sorry, what yeah, what, I, yeah. what I was struck by, and I, I, you know, because you, know, you wrote a piece about this game for the Guardian uh, when at the beginning yeah, of lockdown. Yeah. We were all asked to do just write six hundred words about your favourite game because they were desperately trying to fill some space. <laughs> and what what most people seem to do was to do a game about a team they supported, so they were able to be much more sort of emotionally and individually engaged. And you obviously became an Oviedo fan, but I was struck by what you were talking about uh, and the the, the the sort of the, the the travel to to this game and and. So a sense of menace, sense of threat, the police. Mm. And it was exactly what I'd had going to Sunderland away games when I was sort of 17, 18. So there is, I mean, there is something kind of very, um, I don't even know what the word is. But that, that sort of first sense of taking on the identity of, of a club and that bringing you into situations you wouldn't normally be in, there is something viscally, viscerally stirring about that, viscerally stirring about that. Yeah, I think that's definitely true. And, and and obviously, the other thing is, for me, this was possibly even more new than it would have been for you, had you been the student that had turned up in Oviedo and gone to this game, because as you say, you'd experienced it. I, in truth, hadn't. Um, and, and, you know, I, I, I'm past the point now where I can pretend otherwise. I'm a London Liverpool fan. And so, obviously, I while I went to a lot of Liverpool away games, I didn't do the travel to game I didn't have that that kind of part of the package which is that you travel together in big numbers I was traveling with my dad to games and so it's true that you would see occasionally fairly scary things because you know I saw Liverpool play at, at uh, well all over London basically so so some of those weren't always particularly pleasant and the one that I really remember very clearly was seeing Liverpool at um, Loftus Road against QPR I used to go to QPR a lot because my older brother's a QPR fan but being in the Liverpool end which wasn't an end it was a side at Loftus Road and it would be standing and the police having to pull us out because, and this was pre Hillsborough, and he looked back on it in the context of Hillsborough and how scary it was, pull us out because it was too squashed. And so literally they had the kids pulled us out because I was below people's waists, couldn't see anything. And I remember them having us lined up sitting on the pitch. We were literally sitting around the edge of the pitch while they waited for a space to put further down the pitch and literally walk us along the pitch and put us back in, but put us back in at a part that wasn't quite so squashed. But I never had this kind of, go to grounds and, and, and experience the menace in quite that way um, that, that I had with, with this game. And, and because, of course, as I say, because part of it is the travel. And, and the, the, the thing that really sticks with me about this game is, is, is twofold. One is getting a train to Gijón from Oviedo, which is about 35 kilometres. And the other is walking from the train station to Gijón's ground and seeing, if you like, that, that and, and seeing and feeling that sense of, of menace there. Mm. All right, chaps.